Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this uh, lecture with a thought process from Charles Dickens, uh, fan the sinking flame of hilarity with the wing of friendship and pass the rosy wine. Uh, you might be aware he is uh, one of the great authors Charles Dickens. <coughs> so, uh, in the last lecture we basically looked at uh, flame extinction and its application and later on we looked at also the flame quenching. Flame quenching is basically is one kind of um, extinction, flame extinction and uh, in the process also we define the quenching diameter and also we have defined the quenching uh, distance, right. Generally quenching diameter related to a tube and quenching distance is related to dimensional burner or a kind of things. So, uh, when you conduct experiment in both the uh, apparatus, one is the let us say um, tube burner, other is a two dimensional burner or in the three dimensional burner you can say flame whatever you will be getting from a Bunsen uh, tube, right, you will be getting three dimensional flame and when you get from the two dimensional uh, flame in a uh, slot burner, right, that is known as slot burner and uh, that uh, will be there will be difference in the uh, data like what uh, I had shown you in the last lecture the data about quenching diameter is related to three dimensional flame. But if you conduct the experiment true dimensional and find out the quenching distance that will be different. So, generally the quenching diameter is around something 20 to 50 percent higher than the quenching distance. Why? Because the heat losses in the tube will be higher. Why? It is a curvature effect will be there, right. So, therefore, it will be much higher, surface area will be higher as compared to 2D. So, uh, uh, now uh, we will be looking at a very simplified analysis, analysis to determine the quenching diameter uh, rather we will be relating that uh, laminar burning velocity with the quenching diameter. So, uh, we always talk about a quenching distance kind of thing where the flame is entering into a tube, these are the wall. So, if you look at this is the wall right of the tube and uh, this is uh, if you look at it is a basically tube kind of things. And the flame, this is my flame with the having thickness of delta L, this is my flame, right. This is basically flame, this is my flame, right. And which is moving at a uh, you know laminar burning velocity with SL, that means the burning velocity and particular mixture. Keep in mind that we are assuming it to be one dimensional in real situation it need not to ok even inside. So, here we are assuming one dimensional. So, this is your z direction and this is your r direction and we are saying that uh, at the center the temperature will be maximum that is T f because you know heat loss whatever it will be passing through this like heat losses oh, right it would not be the center may not affect that is the assumption otherwise it will be little lower. So, the temperature profile will be like that and this is your T u keep in mind that this will be asymptotically decreasing to T u, but we will be uh, doing some assumption in that. So, with this assumption what we will do we will basically look at the condition for flame propagation. Flame will be propagating provided the heat generated uh, due to the chemical reaction in the flame uh, is greater than the heat loss due to the heat transfer and heat transfer can take place uh, basically due to the uh, radiation and due to the convection 
but here we are talking about the wall you know through the wall it is taking place so heat conduction which will be more important because even though flame will be uh, touching uh, here so therefore it will be uh, you know some kind of radiation also will be coming convection will be coming but once it will come to the wall it is a heat conduction only right of course at the outer surface there might be some kind of radiation will be taking place because temperature is higher right but we are not considering that we will be basically considering the heat transfer due to conduction only and this is a simplified analysis therefore we are taking that so for that uh, the flame will be quenched when the heat generated due to chemical reaction will be less than the heat loss due to the heat transfer right that is the condition will be applying but in principle actually it should be uh, that means the critical condition is what when it is equal right we will be finding it critical condition right mm -hmm. but if it is less definitely the flame will be quenching so re rate of heat generated per unit volume like what it would be it will be basically q dot triple dash is m dot f into delta s c is equal to q dot conduction this is my equation 1 right and this is the condition critical condition under which we are saying look flame won't propagate because whatever the heat being released it is being lost so will it the flame will propagate flame will not propagate right so that and then that diameter uh, in which it is taking place we call it as a quenching diameter right and why we are considering diameter because that will dictate the heat loss if the larger the diameter then what will happen the heat loss would not be that much because the surface area will be uh, you know not that big but as it is a smaller and smaller the heat losses will be more and the volume the heat being released is reduced right and heat loss is increasing so therefore uh, we consider as a diameter so the heat generated in the flame volume what it would be it would be basically uh, q dot uh, into m dot f delta sc into area what is the area we are considering surface area this is pi by 4 d square this area right into the delta l so this is the surface area what will be considering if you look at uh, like this is my flame right which is considering this is the surface area what we are considering and this area is pi by 4 d q square right and this is your nothing but your delta l this is the flame you know in which is residing this is my flame rest of the things i am not considering although there will be some losses okay but that we are not considering in the flame volume so heat loss due to the wall conduction what it would be due to the heat conduction wall heat conduction basically it is a q dot conduction kg into dt by dr this is basically the surface area pi dq into uh, pi dq is the perimeter right into dl that is the surface area and this is the right <coughs> now if you look at if i will put this thing in equation 2 and equation 3 in equation 1 then i need to determine this dt by dr right which is quite difficult you know because to uh, at this condition i will be looking at here how much kind of wall it is and the profile if you look at to find out this gradient at r right at different r of course i can look at but i will be more interested in here how i'll do that we'll be doing an approximation what we'll assume that we'll say this is basically we'll consider a linear temperature profile right because this is a nonlinear but however we will be considering linear right and then <coughs> we'll find out dt by dr tf minus tu and dq by c if you look at c when it is 2 like it will be linear right if c is equal to 2 then it will be 
linear kind of things. But otherwise, if C phi will take something, you know, it will be different, right? But however, this is an approximation for to get this dt by dr, you will have to invoke the conservation of energy equation and then you will have to solve it numerically or analytically and then do that, which is quite difficult. So, what we will be doing basically, uh, we will substitute this, uh, let us say, we will be substituting this uh, equation 4, 3 and 2 in 1, right. I can uh, get all those things. So, what we will be uh, doing, we will be basically looking at this is that is uh, Q dot due to the heat uh, reaction, right is equal to q dot due to conduction. This is the thing what we need to put it. So, that uh, let us say this is 5, I will substitute these values here that is heat of reactions, uh, you know heat generated uh, in the flame volume is basically m dot triple dash f delta S c pi by 4 d q square delta L is equal to k g pi by d q delta L into T f minus T u d q by c. So, uh, if I look at this delta S c, what is delta S c? Delta S C we know is equal to nu plus 1 C P T F minus T U, right. Are you getting? So, in that case, what I will do, I will basically use substitute this here in place of this, I will be writing mu plus 1 C P T F minus T U. Right. So, what is happening then? Uh, this is of course, average, right? This is average. So, this pi will cancel it out, right? And um, this d q will cancel it out, this t f and this will cancel it out, right? What else? This delta L also will cancel it out, right. Is it so? Delta L will be also cancel it out. So, if you do that, what you will get? You will get basically uh, 4 d q is equal to 4 k g, right. And uh, you will get 4 k g by nu plus 1 C p, right, you will get nu by C p. What else? Any other thing? Then m dot triple dash f, 1 over that, right. C is coming, C will be in the up. So, this is C and this will be root over. Yes or no? C is a constant, you can see is basically a constant. This is a some arbitrary we have taken, otherwise if I take as a linear profile, I will take C as 2, right. <coughs> so, So, uh, after simplification, because we know that m dot f, f uh, is basically 1 over 32 by 9 alpha by rho u nu plus 1 by S L square. I will substitute over here, right, if I will do that what I will get 4 kg we see nu plus 1 C p 
right i will get 32 by 9 alpha by rho u nu plus 1 sl square so uh, if you look at nu plus this will cancel it out and uh, this is right so i will get basically uh, if I look at this, that I will get as uh, root over 128 by 9, 32 into this and uh, kg by kg by rho u cp, right, rho u cp is nothing but your alpha. So, I will get uh, alpha by alpha square I will get alpha square I will be getting alpha by S L right. So, but we know that uh, what is your um, delta L? Delta L with the flame thickness is nothing but your 3 by uh, 4 by 3 alpha by S L, C should come, okay. 128 by C, right. So, if I will substitute over here, right, alpha by S L is nothing but by 3 by 4, right, I will get this is nothing but your root over 8 C delta L. So, this is the relationship what you will get. That means, the quenching distance or quenching diameter in this case is proportional to the flame thickness. And uh, the other things what you can see there is another uh, formula what we have just now see that is d q is uh, equal to 128 c by 9 root over d q is equal to root over 128 c by 9 alpha by s l. That means, the quenching distance or quenching diameter rather sorry the quenching diameter is inversely proportional to the laminar burning velocity. That means, burning velocity will be higher what will happen to the quenching diameter? Quenching diameter will be small right. So, therefore, if you look at it is very difficult to quench the hydrogen air flame or hydrogen oxygen flame because laminar burning velocity will be very high. And using this we can arrest the flame, flame arrester can be designed by using the quenching diameter calculation right. For example, you are operating hydrogen uh, oxygen or hydrogen air flame or methane air flame you want to arrest the flame what do you have to do? you have to basically put some small tubes or a porous plugs or something that you know flame won't travel and this is a similar thing what actually Humphrey Davy did without understanding much you know like he could manage to do that put a screen we use a screen for arresting the flame. So, this small knowledge and also the relationship can be very useful designing the flame arresters. So, as I told that uh, quenching diameter is basically uh, is uh, proportional to the flame thickness that means, the flame thickness will be higher then what will happen d q will be higher. If it is a smaller then that will be uh, the uh, quenching diameter will be smaller. So, let us look at some experimental data for that if you look at this is the flame thickness right and this is quenching diameter and this is versus equivalence ratio. If you look at this is happening you know equivalence ratio 1 around on this range right there is a little shift, but it is having minimum quenching diameter right. As you go towards the rich uh, mixtures right and the lean mixtures this is the lean side 
this is the rich mixture side that means the quenching diameter increases why laminar bonding velocity is basically decreasing so uh, because of fact that this uh, dq is inversely proportional to uh, basically alpha by sl so sl is decreasing means dq will go up right and uh, keep in mind that the uh, your flame thickness is similar in nature flame thickness is increasing towards the uh, both the rich and the lean mixtures because we have seen delta l is proportional to alpha by sl right so therefore uh, it is a similar to that the, the quenching diameter is similar to the flame thickness in the in okay so this is very important point what do we need to uh, look at it and uh, we'll be in the next lecture we'll be looking at flammability limits right and then uh, we'll stop over here okay fine thank you <coughs>